Okay. <laughs> So our approach in any paper, whether it is GS Okay, so for any paper, whether it is GS or anthro or essay, my observation in most of the copies that I have seen and where most of you make mistake is that people do not, you know, decipher the uh, question properly. Right, you do not understand the demand of the question, what is being asked. So the first stage in writing any question is deciphering is it properly that what is the key demand of the question. What I usually observe that people pick one or two keywords and they start elaborating upon them. See nowadays, UPSC have moved beyond it. The reason, has, uh, reason for this is twofold. Nowadays, people started, you know, reading much deeply. Your peer group is started reading much, much deeply and they are writing, you know, regularly. They are practicing it. So with the regular practice, you are not just writing mechanical answers, rather organic answers. I will tell you what do you mean by what I mean by these uh, these words that organic answer and all this right. So the first stage for answer writing is deciphering the questions properly that what is the key demand what the question tries to know from you. Okay, do not pick one or two keywords and then start elaborating upon it because you may be elaborating those keywords but those keywords are just in a context. Okay, uh, for example, today's question that I was just looking into some copies, two people have written. Uh, one question was on globalization, the impact of uh, uh, this globalization on, yeah, what was that question? Just let me show you that question. The question was impact of uh, I have shared that no with you people that file I have shared and the day for 45 uh, the answers also I have shared so in that there was a question Just a moment. Yes, impact of globalization on the livelihood of, of tribal populations. Now, the question was about the impact of globalization on livelihood. Livelihood means basically the economic aspect. So examiner tries to know about the livelihood aspect and if you write everything and then you say that yes we believe in substantivist approach of uh, economic uh, theories. Okay, so what I was saying that in that question, you must understand what is the demand of the question. 
in other questions also i have seen that many people missed out on the demand of the question so the first and foremost thing if you want to score high in gs or sa especially in sa this is very very important if you missed out on this aspect on sa in an S, in any sa i'm telling you that if you are scoring suppose the sa paper is of not suppose it is of 20 1250 marks 125 125 and if you are unable to understand the key demand of the sa then naturally you won't be writing in the way the examiner is expecting from you so he or she won't give you more than 50 55 maximum if you have enriched your answer with you know too many facts and data he will give you he, she will give you 110 total right not beyond that so the first and foremost thing in essay is in essay it becomes much much important in gs yes writing on keywords will give you maybe 85 to 90 easily 85 to 90 you can score even if you do not you know decipher the question properly in many times kyunki kisi na kisi question mein to aisa hoga ki aap you won't be able to decipher out of 20 maybe you will answer very well 14 to 15 questions and that too i'm talking about the topers not everyone will be addressing more than 14 to 15 questions properly that i mean see that that uh, deciphering it properly then presenting it in a structured manner right giving uh, decent examples and all so the first stage is deciphering the question and that is important for your essay that is important for your gs 1 2 3 and that is important for your naturally ethics paper right because ethics and essay are almost on the similar lines they are almost on the similar lines because in ethics and essay the question is basically a situation based question and as ethics most of the questions are situation based okay you have to uh, write according to a particular condition that is been given okay you have to justify with the examples okay so if you start putting wrong examples so naturally you are not picking the line that examiner is expecting you so that is one thing that i will say okay so and that is the first stage the second stage that or the second thing that the examiner is expecting from you so examiner most of the time read two three things first thing is introduction conclusion and the third thing the examiner will be looking for the things which are being highlighted that can be headings okay or anything that has been underlined why i am telling you this that examiner will mainly look for these four aspects of your answer if you have put in some headings if you have underlined or if you are smart enough you have made some graphic some diagram i would say the visible aspects of your answer will be looked by the examiner okay so why introduction through introduction the examiner will see whether the student fathomed out the demand of the question or not that means whether you have deciphered it properly or not he or she will came to know through this introduction okay if you suppose you start introducing and you spent almost one page on the introduction itself it will give a very decent idea to the examiner ki ye bachcha to bhumika hi banata rahega theek hai ki isko basically aage badhne mein isko itni jyada bhumika banani pad rahi hai and if a person is taking too much time in introducing the things in every question that shows a personality trait of an individual 
and that the examiner understand that whether it is the administrator like quality or not right they are not looking for the researchers where the introduction can be too long they are looking for a administrator a leader a manager right who can put his ideas or her ideas in a succinct way in a crisp manner so that everyone can understand even a layman can understand so you have to write you have to write your introduction in a very simple language and to the point in hitting the chord right the main idea of the question you must hit that so the examiner will read, read your introduction the second thing if you have suppose you know everybody know that there is an introduction there is a body and there is a conclusion these are the three things if your body is in the paragraphs and that those are too large and you know bade lambe lambe paragraph hai there is no spacing between them naturally the examiner will not you know feel very interested in them the reason is your copy is just another copy for him or her you are not a person right koi bhi nahi ho aap unke liye it is just another copy agar usme acha laga unko if you are better than your peer group you will be rewarded and otherwise you will be punished okay so use smaller paragraphs more visible paragraphs make headings wherever you can right try to put some arguments underline them make some graphics that can show your ideas but make sure that only graphics only maps or only diagrams will not help because this is a subjective paper where you have to put your ideas into words okay so even if you make a graphic if you even if you make a chart or anything you just put that in words that what it explains so that is what you have to understand that make yourself visible okay then after that introduction and finally conclusion these things we have covered right conclusion the conclusion of your answer should give hope okay if you are talking about some problem then show your team spirit that we must come together right we must learn from other countries other states or we can you know see that case study so just you know uh, show that you know sense of commitment sense of spirit inside you to the examiner that you are willing to do something these things will make him or her understand that this boy or this girl have that level of commitment he or she can do wonders if inducted in this service you feel that these things are not important but let me tell you even if you guys write any word it does have impact on the reader right and if you feel some emotions in the final words you know we talk about op uh, optimistic way of writing we say that you know uh, uh, your conclusion should be optimistic what optimism uh, what other optimism will be that if you talk about some commitment we must do this we must collaborate all stakeholders should come together and make this you know possible so that peace prosperity can be ensured a sustainable development can be you know done in this way you must show this thing right so this is the thing now this is not the only thing the third thing that i normally see you have understood the question you wrote a wonderful introduction you gave headings you have underlined you made graphics and all but whether you have put the entire answer in a proper structure or not now here's what is the structure structure normally as structuralists say and uh, levi strauss say the structure is what it is basically you know your uh, unconscious mind ke andar hai hai na and which is patterned in binary hot cold and all so structure normally aapka mind banane lagta hai thode dino ke baad mein when you have sufficient fodder in your mind so you automatically can structure any answer 
with practice your structuring will be better and better and better that i can assure but normally what i see that uh, what the examiner expect from this structure suppose there is a question on anything suppose you know, we just take the today's question uh, that is the forest policy and tribes so what i gave you is a overall structure of the answer this is a open ended question you just talk about few forest policies and you just give a definition to tribes that can be an answer to it but that won't be a complete answer right what will be the what will be a complete answer to this forest policy and tribe the examiner tries to know how forest policies and tribes are related right how forest forest policies have evolved and what was the impact on tribes finally the examiner expect a anthropologically oriented administrator to give some suggestions what it should be past mein jaisa tha wo important nahi hai for him or her but it is equally important that what you think what kind of forest policies should be so that a win win situation can be created for the uh, this uh, environment or ecology and the tribes so for this question i gave you this if you can uh, if you can see this that uh, initially you talk about how tribes are living in harmony with the forest for ages so you just show that relationship of forest and tribe then you can talk about impact of forest policies impact of forest policies now see impact of forest policies on tribes you can start with you can divide in many ways that depends upon you how you see it you can talk about pre independence and post independence or you can talk about when you know these tribes were given serious concessions and they have been uh, you know uh, considered as equal part right they were not uh, seen as you know exploiters of forest and uh, the state was regulating everything in this forest activity so it depends upon you i gave you this that i believe that uh, 1988 policy was the landmark but even 1988 policy in which boroy barman gave substantial recommendations that was still uh, not complete and 2006 gave you, know, you these individual and community rights it, it gave uh, you know right over minor forest products some land titles okay even uh, the policies uh, or the land acquisition in the tribal forest areas was dependent on the gram sabha all these things uh, you know in association with pesa and all that was given a substantial right to that yes yes please somebody says uh, yes, something sir, thank you. yes yeah. sir uh, another question regarding this uh, could you explain about that the critical question like if you attempt the critical question the what the approach we will doing this just like i'll give a example uh in one question is preamble myth or reality in contemporary india just like question is it's a critical manner mm. so how to we approach this in myth or reality okay preamble really is, is preamble myth or reality in contemporary india so basically this uh, keyword show the critical manner so how to we attempt the mm. critical questions answer writing okay so is preamble myth or reality in contemporary india okay so in today's india contemporary india we are facing with certain challenges right and these challenges basically question the very foundational principles of our democracy right in contemporary india we are facing with so many challenges agar aap dekho garibi ko so garibi aapka jo hai liberty उसको कटेल करता है जस्टिस वेदर इट इज सोशल इकोनॉमिक एंड पॉलिटिकल उसके ऊपर एक क्वेश्चन मार्क है सो बेसिकली दिस क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट वेदर प्रियम्बल इज अ मिथ और रियलिटी व्हाट प्रियम्बल एनविसेजेस 
you write in the introduction. What it envisages? We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign socialist, socialist, secular, and democratic republic. On this day of 26th, uh, beach mein, yes, justice, uh, social, economic, and political liberty of thought and expression, and uske niche kya hai? integrity and uh, fraternity. Right, all these things. Now, just after that, when you have written that, it envisages, it envisages that India is a sovereign country, right? It is a socialist country. It is a secular and democratic republic. It tries to ensure justice, liberty. Okay. And uh, what you can say? Fraternity, Fraternity, integrity of India, right? These are the main keywords that Correct. are written. So you try to write, write all these things in the introduction. Okay, then let us analyze what, whether it is myth or reality. Okay. So when will you say that preamble becomes a myth for us? After just after the introduction, because it is a 10 marker or a 15 marker? Sir, it's a 15. It is a 10 marker, I think. Yes, sir. It's 10 marker. 15 marker. 15 marker, yeah. 10 marker, right. It's 15 marker, sorry, sir. Oh, either way. It's 15 marker. Okay. If it is 15 marker, then it is wonderful because we can elaborate very well, right? So whether it is a myth, right? So let us analyze on this aspect that whether it is a myth. So on what ways and what are the examples to justify it? Is the sovereignty of India is compromised? Are we not a socialist country? Are we not a secular country? Is our democracy under threat or is justice, whether it is social, economic and political, not available or liberty of thought is under question or the fraternity aspect, the social capital within the people is not available or the integrity of the nation is threatened. So you discuss all these aspects under this myth aspect. So is it a myth? You try to justify with the examples. Then if you say that preamble is a reality, give examples in favor of it. Finally, when you are going to conclude, yeah, I'm coming to this. Yeah, please, sir. Thank you. Sir, actually, hmm. I'll prepare, actually, I will prepare this uh, question. Basically, I'll first of all, starting the intro is uh, basically be the people of India and some keywords. Another way in body, uh, we write it like, uh, sorry, in uh, reality, like uh, Nehru adopted the objective resolution policy and some verdict about the very case and all. Uh, after then, we uh, use like some example, just like uh, Abhita could be separated state, Abhita Nai Bana, like in the religious, secular basis. It's a religious basis, so we were follow the secular concept in reality. In the another side of this side, sir, uh, I'll give some example like. After 1991, uh, we lose our like uh, socialist policy help through LPG, uh, so, sorry, secular also the case of uh, state sponsor religions and social justice also like Dalit attacks on. So my question is, can we use this like we will use about this because it's a critical manner. So examiner will come to that critical. That is why I, I have taken myth first. Okay. See why I have taken myth first. That is that was deliberate, because we will we know that it envisages this. These are the principles, the foundation principles of our constitution. So we are telling that at what level we face a threat on these principles. Hey, right. thank you. Bandhu. So. Uh, what are the threats 
and in what way we can say that what we intend to what our freedom fighters intend to and we are unable to achieve those objectives today so we are giving just few examples then we will say we will talk about reality no everything is perfect and when you write you know in the concluding paragraphs you will take two concluding paragraphs in what way you will say we are a evolving democracy and in any evolving democracy there are threats there are turbulences there are tensions there are push and pulls but finally we are coming out strong again and again our institutions are strong right our constitution and its values are strong the people are you know very resilient in india we respect democracy we live democracy right all these things you can talk in the concluding paragraphs when you talk about sovereignty yes our sovereignty you can write examples like you know whenever there is a threat from in, in our borders or we uh, do not bow down at the international institutions below the any international institution koi bhi international institution ho we are not bowing down before anyone right we are socialist yes we are still following the socialistic principles right what is written in our democratic uh, this uh, directive principles of state policy we try to enforce them through a variety of policies right and schemes you can give examples for that kon kon si scheme hai jo ki socialistic principles ke uh, fulfill karne ki koshish karti hai give me any example sir welfare of state just like जितनी भी स्कीम आप पढ़ते हो ना सो डेढ़ सौ जो स्कीम है आपकी जो बुकलेट्स में मिलती है आपको विजन या जो भी बुकलेट्स में आप खरीद के पढ़ते हो गए उसमें जो स्कीम्स है वो ज्यादातर नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ द स्कीम्स यू कैन से मोर देन नाइनटी परसेंट और फ्रॉम डीपीएसपी because dpsps are the directions to the state by the constitution what you should do how you should bring welfare to the people right so all those schemes koi bhi scheme utha lo kisi bhi cheez ke upar sari ko sari ko ek hi kaam hai kuch schemes yes fundamental rights ke liye bhi hain we, we don't deny that but more than 90% are from dpsps theek hai so then uh, justice social economic and political justice political justice we provided political justice right fundamental right rights to hain and the supreme court high courts are functioning very well although there are some threats if you want to write give the negative side that so many cases are pending and the justice time delivery is very slow poor people cannot access it so naturally you can give that negative in negatives so and in that way it is a myth basically this can be as a topic right so they have played it very well in 15 marker it can be a very good essay i would say all of you i would request all of you that uh, write this essay is preamble myth or reality in contemporary india write this as an essay and uh, show it to me uh, as soon as you can right Definitely. think elaborately and on these uh, uh, don't try to go here and there i gave you the structure Mommy. i gave you the structure and try to stick uh, with that structure only if you can find better structure that is well and good but don't try to mix too many dimensions go okay yes so this is a good question a very good question and uh, to write this question in uh, 15 marker in itself a challenge if suppose it is given in 10 marks try to write in uh, 10 marker 15 marker and an essay also you know that will help you If suppose someone feel like यार एक ही चीज को मैं बार बार नहीं लिख सकता 
I have this pro- problem that I cannot write the same thing again and again. Then I would say I would recommend this problem hai, that one should write it again and again because break that barrier. That barrier will be an impediment in your success. So what it is? Hmm. Thank you so much for you giving a piece of huh. creative idea. Okay. It's very cool, fruitful and worth it. Yes. And definitely you will sure implement your in answer. Yes. Okay. So uh, try to write this. And uh, I gave you some structures for today's paper. Uh, that how we should uh, progress uh, with these questions, right? And uh, that uh, that structure I gave you after reading two three uh, two three copies that have been submitted to me. Uh-huh. Right. What is this? What is this? Hmm. Okay, so let's start with today's uh, paper. Now, I have completed the introduction and finally what I was talking, the third thing, what we have discussed, how to structure your answer. How to structure basically. So this was a structure for this question that, you know, uh, the problem is that you write introduction, then how to connect. One way is that you just write a heading that whether it is a myth or not. Okay. Or you connect a connecting line between that heading and that. What you can say that that our constitution makers, our constitution makers have intended or the constitution envisages this. Now let us try to analyze this in present day developments, whether just a moment. Hello. Yes. Uh, yes. So write that connecting line, whether it is a myth or not. So let us analyze the myth aspect. Okay, whether it is a myth or not. Okay. So let us analyze myth and then you write, uh, you know, whether it is myth, then you give arguments in uh, uh, that support, right? That to an extent that what we have intended, we are not able to achieve that. Then you'll say that whether it is reality or not, then you give examples. Okay. Then you finally, in concluding paragraphs, you would say that our democracy is evolving okay and finally we'll write that what should be our you know in what direction of our effort should be right so that we make our democracy a more vibrant when more strong a more participative one that is how you can structure it now these are the, this was the third aspect and next is the fourth aspect See, any question that is being asked in UPSC, any question which is being asked by UPSC, they are asking in context, right? So you basically give some examples, some contemporary examples, Link it to the current events. 
see these current events when you link when you give examples about it so basically what happens it basically adds up to your understanding uh, you know the examiner will think that you got the grasp of it and you are able to link with various events which are here going on fifth point that i normally uh, try to see is whether you have justified your argument suppose you give any argument to and fro right your arguments should be backed by the logic facts stats data right some report or anything आपने कभी अगर पार्लियामेंट में डिस्कशन सुना हो या फिर किसी भी पॉलिटिकल लीडर या फिर किसी मिनिस्टर का एक आपने वो सुना हो या फिर कोई भी इंटेलेक्चुअल की बातें सुनी हो यू नॉर्मली सी यू नॉर्मली फाइंड दैट दे टॉक ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सम फैक्ट्स सम डेटा सम रिपोर्ट्स सो वट एवर देर आर्ग्यूमेंट्स आर वेदर वी से ये झूठ है या ये सच है सो दे टॉक विद सम फैक्ट सम सब्सटेंस so this thing adds substance to your answers right so these substances these examples right and uh, this justification in a proper manner i believe that will be the sufficient thing okay decipher it right good example good introduction good conclusion headings use headings underlines graphic or diagrams structure it a proper in a proper way okay then link it to the current events use data facts and reports to substantiate your arguments okay uh, this is it uh, i have to end the class today here itself okay i got a call yes please shilpa yes sir my basic purpose regarding this question is ki critique karne pe like it's not uh, like it's not big deal about the effects of examiner it's as such you should to you no not at all not at yeah. all not at all if you are giving the right examples yeah just like i have and this question sir i have fact of uh, yes like, please uh, myth is like uh, i'll give a fact about like after 1991 we will lose our uh, preamble uh, like uh, purpose just like we use socialist purpose in we use lpg like after the lpg we lose the socialist purpose so it is i think right or wrong could you correct me see this lpg uh, is these reforms i have studied administration also public administration and we say that with lpg basically globalization so globalization that means we could become a global village so it is being said that globalization takes away the sovereignty of the nations it is being said that sovereignty of nations is taken away that is one uh, critique of globalization right this liberalization liberalization again the uh, you know the sovereign entities basically the public entities were privatized right basically more institutions liberal policies has you know uh, non state actors or you can say private entities are basically entering into that field which were reserved privatization whatever was governmental they were turned into private so naturally these things have an impact and this is not wrong what i said if you substantiate your arguments with some stats some data some facts some report then it is not at all a wrong thing i'm getting a call uh, i have to just wait a minute
yes uh, so yes what we were talking about so th these things are not wrong this is well accepted by the administrative thinkers that yes it has been debated that whether the state sovereignty uh, you know came down or not now let us talk about the second thing that you say socialism so our intended goal was socialism right that means a state was doing many things right if not all then many things we have a mixed model kind of thing so in the if you talk about whether it is a myth we are not completely socialistic from the very beginning we are not completely socialistic yes our goal our directive principle says that we have to follow the socialistic principles while framing some policies for the development of the weaker sections indeed that was there but that was not the complete say right so in that say yes you can say that we were not completely socialistic so you can say here we can see that it is a myth that we are completely socialistic right and in reality in reality what uh, you know we can say uh, we are meeting what uh, preamble and we says is as well as we are going beyond it right in uh, making welfare policies also so aisa nahi hai ki aap dekho jab aap criticize karoge then you criticize it ab aisa bhi nahi hai criticize karte time tum galiyan dene lagoge aisa bhi nahi hai na desh ki preamble hai so theek hai there are some yes some some uh, thoda sa uh, dilated hona chahiye so you want do one thing you just write it down and uh, all of you write this question is uh, a preamble myth or reality in contemporary india right then i will see that uh, in which way you are going i won't i don't see that you will uh, criticize it too much you won't find much to even criticize it right and even if you find things then you cannot say that yes it is no it is a myth completely without facts without data uh, without examples is important or like it's just being a being a solution is optimistic No, so it's uh, you, say, approach should be practical first. Is the military truck do kahan pe? Yes, sorry. Uh, it's okay, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, so you are saying that uh, being a administrator, you should be practical. Optimism is one thing, but you will uh, you have to analyze the facts also. See, let me tell you. Uh, I told you earlier also. Uh, right now we are talking about covid 19 and its, and its impact right okay, right so in covid 19 basically you know that the death rate was not 4000 per day it was much 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 beyond it okay and if the administrators nowadays they see that the death rate was 4000 and the policies were made policies were made in accordance with the for papa fir se bola rani ko so if the policies are made in accordance with the report of this so the administrators are not practical if the administrator see the ground report by some independent think tank right or by some experts and they came to know that no the death rate was maybe 16000 suppose that is the thing so what a uh, 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 bureaucrat should do now here they can criticize a little on the basis of those reports because here the policies 
should meet up to the demand right if you are unable to meet these demands then there is no use okay so you do write this question right and uh, i will i will meet you tomorrow again yes, sir you are right, right. yeah thank you so much okay okay take care take care all of you bye bye take care bye bye